Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Mats series. In this episode I will be showing you how to render out the Crypto Mats and actually apply them right inside Nuke. This will be a rather basic one because there is not much to it actually. So um, I was setting up a little scene, some nice shaders and this is currently the render I got. And as it is now without Crypto Mats you would need to create object IDs or material IDs and create custom AOVs to render them out to your compositing package. So the benefit of having crypto mats is this whole process is automated. So as you have seen in the previous tutorial on, on the crypto mat series where I was showing you how to install that for your 3D package and for Maya in general, I will now be showing how to actually set it up. So you would go in your render globals. If you have your setup scene, all your objects are in place, you are ready to render. So as you can see, I don't have the cryptos, crypto AOVs in here. So to get them installed or applied, all you gotta do is search for the, or browse for them in the AOV browser and add them crypto asset material and object crypto mats to your AOV list. So clicking this arrow they will be moved over and you have them accessible in your active AOVs. So and if you render your scene so in, in your AOV drop down list in your render view you can ha you now have access to all the crypto AOVs so it's three of those so with your, your default ones you then get the crypto asset, crypto material and crypto object AOVs. And as you can see, if, if they are like colorful like this, then your setup is correct. And you can also test or check if your kind of your material assignments are, are represented by this color. So you would see that my car paint is this greenish color and the rims are one color. So this seems all to be working just fine. So um, then obviously you need to render your sequence or your still image. So um, if you render your still image, you can actually render it using Arnold Render View and you could just save your multi-layer EXR file which combines all your AOVs in one file. Or um, in your render globals, you would need to do a few adjustments. So you would click on this little drop-down menu uh, on each AOV and select the driver which is the global driver of all the AOVs. And in here you have the option to merge those AOVs into one file. So you can take this and in the end, after your batch render, you will only get one EXR file with all these AOVs combined. If you don't want to do that, untick this and you get each AOV in a separate render. So you would need to import all these files in Nuke or your compositing software and then add them or merge them together to get your final output image. So what I, I'm doing, I will merge them and I will give them a, give the scene a proper name in here something which makes sense and then I would go to render and batch render and this will take a while it's you, I, I'm not doing it using a render farm it's just using the native Maya submitter so my scene will be rendered and when it's done let's head over to nuke uh, so now I am back in nuke or actually the first time in nuke and the first thing I want to do is load in um, the render image so I would hit R to read and then I would um, browse to my files. So you can see I've got all these folders because I was doing tests before, um, but this is actually the merged AUV batch render. So let's bring that in and it loads a bit. And then you see this is the final render of my high render settings. And it looks pretty clean, especially you get these nice reflective caustics on the ground. So it's it feels very nice integrated. I also rendered depth of field as you can see, um, the, it's getting blurry in the back. And the cool thing about CryptoMat, it actually respects that and it works just fine with blur or um, with depth of field or motion blur. Um, so the next step would be to get it to working, which is actually pretty simple. Um, once you have installed it correctly, if you, if you don't know how to install it for new, please check out the previous tutorial about CryptoMat, how the installation file. And then you should have this little icon here and you can hit CryptoMat down there or you just select your node, hit tab and type in CryptoMat and then you get this object. And it automatically reads from um, the multi-channels. So 
In here, you can just change the layer selection to be crypto object, and then you get all these objects right in here. And all you got to do now, if you hit A, you see there is no alpha channel, so you can choose picker add and control click in the viewport and this will output you an alpha channel of that selected area so you have different options you can preview it in right in here but in the selection you can only see the alpha channel single selection would only um, allow you to select one object at a time if this is off you can actually control click and you add to the mat and in the end you get a, a proper mat what you want to grade um, also you can preview just the edges of the image and then you have a better idea what you are selecting which is very helpful if you just want to select this you can actually see what you are selecting and let's see what the other mode is is none is just you just see the alpha channel on selection so I'm always holding control to select objects um, you can also see that this list if single selection is off this lit list gets bigger and bigger and you can see how the um, alpha is being constructed and if you switch over to um, the material instead you can see that if I show the edges again it now have o has only the material selection so this would be now the car paint material or this, this would be the um, just single selection so this would be all the tires and you can see that the mat list name is actually my shader name, which I added inside of Maya. So this, they are actually exactly the same thing, which is pretty nice. So it's very helpful to have this uh, working. So now you would um, ask yourself, how how do I use this kind of stuff now, right? Because I've got the mats and what, what can I do with this? So um, let's say I just want to change a car paint from this brownish uh, golden chrome copper chrome to I don't know to some something else let's just maybe grade it up a bit so I add a grade node to my render or let's just say I want to bring up the spec right I just want to boost the spec on on the car paint so I would create a shuffle and I would shuffle out the car paint let's say the direct um, spec direct is it in here no, that's that. I think it's code then. Yeah, so this is now the coding. And if I just want to... Okay, luckily enough, this is only... The code is only existing on the car paint. But anyways, let's just do this example anyway. So um, I first need to actually subtract that from the beauty. So I would create a, a merge. Another uh, no, merge node. And I would subtract these two from uh, from each other. Let's see if this actually works. So now from, okay, so now there is no code layer anymore. And the cool thing now, if I create a plus after A plus B, so this would be my spec again. So the spec is added on top. So now this, these two things should resemble the beauty, which I actually do. And now if this is, let's just clean this up a little bit to make it more obvious what's happening so I was extracting the spec direct oh sorry the code direct and now I want to grade it right so after it's being added on top again so in this case in this case I would plug in the grade node right here and then from my crypto object um, I can actually hook it up from here and put it down here connect the mask like so so now this is connected and now I can only color correct the mask input and the mask input in this case is the car paint so if I check my beauty output I can now easily just control how much how, how specky the car should be in the end and let's we can do the same thing for spec roughness or like the the rims or whatever so it's pretty easy to do these kind of things and especially if you have the other AUVs on your uh, disposal as well I could change I could easily just change a specular color now um, if I go to specular direct you can see now in here you get the 
the colors of the rims from the rubber all the stuff is in one pass but i just want to grade the the car paints so essentially what you need to do is do the same thing or use actually the same mat i was using here um, and then just use this to grade the specular direct so let's just do that as well and um, but this time well essentially what you need to do is color correct each pass separately and then add them back together in the end um, because otherwise you will be changing all the other layers which go on top of that so this is the from so actually I could just do the grading here yeah and then it should work so let's should tr try to do a hue shift um, bring this guy in here obviously it's a bit ugly the comp comp wise so now we have let's say a red car and you can see now everything is changed the rims are now sign and all that stuff but i would need to use the same mat to just shift it on the alpha channel and now you can see it only worked on the car paint and now this is a different issue like you can see that the the caustics of the of the metal and even the reflection here are still um still this copper color so that's something which is a bit tricky to fix because you can't really get a mat for the the caustics unless there is something in here which i don't think it is maybe indirect should be oh maybe it's an indirect yeah so <laughs> actually it's pretty simple you can just use the spec indirect the problem is you would need to uh, maybe subtract the rims from this and only have that yeah we can try this actually so currently let's just do rgba so this is you can see it's warm and you get these warm hin uh, tints here everywhere still so what i want to do now is extract the shuffle out the spec indirect let's see if my comp skills are sufficient enough um, specular indirect and let's do the same operation do a from as well so now there is no spec indirect which is correct and now here we just plus it back on top um, let's see so that is that and let's just plus this guy back over Obviously, it's it gets pretty ugly qu pretty quick. Okay, so now this is the same result. And the only thing which I need to do now is use the same hue shift here and just shift this indirect color. So from this color to this color. But you can see the rims are now affected. So what I can do now, I can just create another crypto mat object. Uh, crypto mat and just deselect de the rims or just do an invert right so let's just select uh, materials this guy and check the alpha that's the alpha channel and create an invert or actually I think maybe this has an invert yeah it has so let's just hook this up so currently it's only changing the rims so I want to invert the mask input so now it's affecting everything except the rims and now you get a uh, this red caustics or the ca uh, the red indirect as well and if I plus this now back on top you can see um, it works pretty easy pretty good and it w it w you would have a hard time to do this without mats so um, this should just be a quick example how to set it up and how to get it to work pretty easily um, and then you can you could actually clone this node so you just have one hue shift in the end but um, let's just I'm not sure the shortcut but there's uh, force clone clone all K actually that was the one plug this here use this met there uh, why didn't this work Oh, is that clone from this guy? I'm not sure how clone works then. Interesting. Oh, the mat is inverted. Now it's working. Uh, it's not invert uh, not working because one is inverted and the other one is not. I guess that's the problem. 
Anyways, so this would be the approach to get CryptoMed working in your scene. So this would be the um, best case scenario, I guess. Um, but there are different problems, especially if you have large scenes. So let's head over to Maya. So as you can see currently, this is just a basic scene with my mesh in in the in the, in the render view. So it it becomes unfortunately a bit complicated if you use instancing or or stand-ins. So an Arnold stand-in is actually an object which enables you to replicate objects, um, but they go they don't have uh, another memory footprint, so it's all shared and the translation times are really fast. And especially if you have large environments, stand-ins or um, other procedurals which generate instances like mash or xgen they have um, lots of flexibility to create large objects but they don't work currently work with um, cryptomed there is a little workaround which i will be showing you in the next episode which will be a bit more advanced because it will involve a bit of coding and it will be just a little bit more tricky i would say to get it working um, but it will still be interesting and i will definitely show the way how to get it to work. So let's just fix this up here. I'm not sure why this needs to be off. Okay, so this is now red. Is this red too? This is not red because this one needs to be inverted. Okay, so now both are red again. There we go. So if I now, let's change the maybe to a whatever 180 minus 180. So I think I can just um, how was that copy middle mouse drag? Damn, I'm I'm so used to Katana, it's hard to actually in Katana you can just paste it uh, paste it as an expression and it just links that. I think um, there was a way if I just middle mouse drag it over or something, I can link them. Oh, I'm so such a noob. There was definitely a way to do it. Anyways, so this um, completes the this episode, like how to get CryptoMod working in your uh, render package and how to actually render it out from your render software. So um, if, if you have any questions about this workflow, please comment um, them in a the section below. And obviously, if you like this uh, video, please give me a thumbs up. And also, I appreciate the support on Patreon. I really appreciate it. It helps me keep going. And obviously, don't forget to subscribe to get this channel even bigger. Thank you very much, guys. See you in the next episode.